And I'm joined by singer-songwriter Joy Williams. Joy, so great to have you yeah, here today. Thanks for having me. It's a joy to have you here. Oh, oh. <laughs> if I had a dime. Right? You probably hear that all like, the time. I'd maybe have like five dimes. It's not yeah. really that many. <laughs> well, now you have six. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, congrats on your new album. It's Thank called you. Venus Acoustic. It's an acoustic version of an album you put out last year. Yeah. And why did you decide to go acoustic with this record? Well, I think after building it out the way that we did, it just, um, I don't know, it just felt like the songs were still, um, I don't know, lingering. It was like they just kept lingering for me to kind of like take another look at them again. And, um, and how we wrote them was stripped down. Mm -hmm. uh, when I co-wrote them, it was, they were all like acoustic guitar and vocal save one song was a piano but it was always that really stripped down kind of form mm -hmm. so i thought i wonder what would happen if i just put it out like that so putting it out has been really exciting and i've been really thrilled with the response it seems like people have been really connecting with it yeah and it hit number one on one of the itunes charts so congratulations yeah. Yeah, on thank that you. so that's good to hear i do yeah. yeah it does feel good of course it feels good that's great by the way if you're watching on facebook send us your comments send us your questions and i'll get to them on the air so what's that like going back to the you know the roots and back to those old versions did it take a long time or was it easy to kind of pull that together no it felt really organic yeah. to do and it wasn't like this overly calculated move either it was just it was like, well, you know, we have this. Right. Like, why don't we share this? I don't want to just keep it in the vault and, like, let it gather dust if there might be a place for people to appreciate it. And I don't know. I feel like music is for sharing. It is. And there's a couple of songs that didn't make it on the first one, mm -hmm. that's, including the title track, Venus. Yeah. So tell us the story behind that. That's kind of a throwback to <laughs> yeah. some, like, 70s albums. It is. Though, right? It totally is. I know. Uh, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it was just really fun to kind of, as we were figuring out how to put the... Uh, the more produced full solo album together because we were listening to it I was like I think we should just keep it more compact I'm like but we have these extra songs I'm like yeah but like this just feels right to me so we we let some songs go mm -hmm. um, and like kind of put them back in the vault and then when we were putting the acoustic record together I was like we should maybe we should throw in like a couple surprises in there and um, Venus writing Venus was such a it was such an, a, a fun experience, you know. We I did that with Matt Morris and mm -hmm. uh, and also wrote it with Charlie Peacock, who I've done other work with in the past, and it was just so fun writing that song. And then it just felt it just felt like the right thing to finally let it fly and um, and put it out. And I think it's fun too now that like people can connect the dots. Like, why did she name it Venus? Like, well, that's because yeah. of this song. <laughs> so um, Venus sort of led the way thematically for me and. Um, can you talk a little bit about the themes you tackle on this album? Yeah, I mean, they're not easy themes, yeah. really. I mean, I went through a lot, you know, in the last four years. There was just a lot of change, whether it was career change, mm -hmm. post the Civil Wars, um, I lost my father to cancer, just learning how to become a new mom yeah. and, um, and figure out how to do life in a totally different way. Um, it was a lot to process. But um, on the acoustic, uh, version we w I wanted to make sure the songs that we chose you know really sort of highlighted the moving forward process because mm -hmm. um, we I do I tackle things like grief and um, and belonging and what it looks like to repair something that's been broken and it, within me first and um, finding your way out again and um, w hopefully with clearer eyes in the process somewhat therapeutic for you oh uh, yeah 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 okay music's kind of like that for <laughs> me in general whether I get to sing it live or write it it's all it all feels like a catharsis, but it's not just it's not just like taking my own pulse, you know. I like to write in a way that hopefully other people could kind of like I don't know, like take a post it note from their own emotions and like put it on the song too. Those are the songs I love. You know, yeah. the songs that have meant the most to me growing up. It was like they know, they get me. You know, we've never met. It's like those kinds of songs always really mattered to me, so I'm trying to pay it forward. I love that. I know there was those especially when you're young, I feel like songs really hit you. I mean there's some songs that are just like even when I hear like them what? today. Like what? Well, Putting you on the spot. I know, putting me on the spot. Well, I'm a big Bruce Springsteen fan, for yeah. example. So, I mean, I know a lot of Not people love boss. Thunder Road, but I mean, yeah. I loved Racing in the Street and some mm. of the deeper tracks. So, mm. I, whenever I listen to Bruce, I feel like I'm thrust back into like a 12 year old girl. Dude, right? REM, Everybody Hurts. Oh, yeah. I was, I was just like, that was like on Google repeat. 
booing. <laughs> I was like boo hooing in my room. Like, well, I was like exactly. eight. I, you know, I'm like, what did I have to be sad about? Like homework? I, I don't know. know. I thought the same thing. Yeah. Though. <laughs> just, I mean, believe me, I was like on repeat on the way to the mall. Yeah, it, tra- it can just transport you. You oh. know, that's what it's meant to do. It is, and it's nice that you're giving that back to new people, and they probably you probably hear from fans. Oh, this song meant so much to me, and everything. It is cool to hear that. Yeah. I never, I never anticipate that, but I always appreciate it. Yeah. You know? it makes you feel that it's not just some sort of like selfish endeavor you know it's, it's true. cool to see the the strawberry shoots like keep going out further and further and further however many years I'm you know I'm doing this I've been doing this a long time yeah yeah and continue to go well yeah. we're getting a lot of uh, comments from fans so I want to get to some of them yeah. now oh so you're not checking your your like Facebook I am page not che- right now. your own <laughs> personal yeah. Facebook page it is yeah they're yeah I'm not checking I'm like I'm online I'm, like, I'm texting God, everyone so I know all my friends right oh, she's terrible that's why I'm holding the, <laughs> the phone <laughs> But we are, we are actually getting some great Good. comments. Megan says Venus is a wonderful album. Love the acoustic too. So Sweet. like that's really nice. Thank yeah, you, Megan. Yeah, it's amazing that they're that you know people are enjoying both. Yeah, it's yeah. bringing it's bringing new fans and it's also kind of bringing along you know those who've been really loyal to. Them. Absolutely. Uh, Jeff Seiler says, "What inspires you and creates those great songs?" Oh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, nice. Good question. Conversations with friends or um, journaling or Mm -hmm. books I've read, movies I've seen. Um, The process of life is is like an unending space of creativity for me. Like how we grow as people, how we connect, how we fall in love, how we fall out of love. Um, You know, what's it like to become more awake and present in the moment? Like those are things I love. Mm -hmm. And that happens every day, whether you're like, you know, making your kid grilled cheese for lunch, or you know, you're off to work in the car, or you're having a conversation with someone you haven't seen in a really long time, um, or you're just hanging out with someone that you love being still. Like I think there's, it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. Creativity and and inspiration for me, if I'm calm enough to find it, it's all over the place. Wow, that's nice to hear. In addition to your music, we've also seen you make a small screen debut mm-hmm. on the Showtime series, Roadies. Congrats yeah. on that. You guest star in two episodes. Yeah. They've already aired for the summer. Yes. What there ha- may or may not be another episode. Ooh, coming. that's exciting but to you hear. you didn't hear that from me um, live online. <laughs> we'll just table that for now. <laughs> yeah. But you did, you know, you did connect with Cameron Crowe, the series creator, yeah. via Twitter, right? How, yeah. that, how did that all come about? Well, he was he was a fan of the Civil Wars, and then uh, we started like DMing each other, uh-huh. and um, and it just came, it just grew from there. It just became this friendship that blossomed. And you know, Nate, my husband, and Miles, my son, we moved to Venice Beach mm-hmm. um, and bought a house there when we were uh, working on Venus. And um, I wanted to be closer to my dad while he was um, sick at the time, too. So Cameron became part of sort of like the crew, just like part of the friend uh, tribe, as it were. And he was telling me about this show idea that he had, and of course I loved it, because, you know, being living on the road basically since I was 17, on and off, it was really inspiring to me. So we would just share. We'd just share huh. about what we experienced on the road. I mean, his stories are like of epic oh, proportions. Oh, sure. Um, and just our mutual love for the people that work so hard that very rarely get thanked mm-hmm. and that very rarely um, get acknowledged for the hard work they do, which is everybody behind the scenes. So uh, Rhodes was a total serendipitous thing. I mean, Cameron one day at lunch was just like, I think you could act. Have you ever wanted to do that? I was like, well, there was this one time in junior high that I thought I wanted to act, but I, you know, music always came first. But it's really fun to do this. I had so much fun, you know, and getting to know Cameron Moore and Winnie Holzman and J.J. Abrams and working on that kind of set with an amazing cast and crew. It was, it was something I'll never forget. An epic way to dip your toe in, by the way, to, uh, to acting, and an easy, easier way for me too, having you know, been a musician to be a part mm-hmm. of a music loving show. Yeah. So I got to step in, in um, after auditioning a couple times. It was just a thrill to be able to get the role. Oh, that's so cool. it's that's been exciting. fun. I got stopped the other day. They were like, are you Janine? Oh, like, you they didn't even know I did music. I was like, yes. Wow. <laughs> it's a whole other level of it's fame. It's totally fun. <laughs> I just totally Kristen winked that for a second. Know, that's good. That's um, good. It's, yeah. a, you know, it's a safe place here. I, apparently. <laughs> I'm just going to make myself at home. Oh, that's great. So yeah. what's it like? J.J. Abrams, um, did you have any time with him on yeah. set? Yeah. What's he like to yeah, work alongside? Yeah, he was, well, he came often, yeah. honestly. I mean, and he's a music lover. He composes music himself and 
is obviously such a great storyteller. So um, we would we would get to chat, you know, in between scenes and uh, on the red carpet when uh, when everything was uh, you know premiering. He's a, he has such a calm presence mm -hmm. about him, and um, he's very present with you when he's with you. And I will never forget the first time after chatting with him uh, off camera, then having to go do, I think it was like my second scene that I'd done like ever acting. And he just was standing right behind the DP, the director of photography, just standing right behind the DP in my exact line of vision. And I just was like, <laughs> and they were like, okay, cut, what happened? I'm like. JJ is standing right there. I just like got to find my cool. So thankfully I was able to um, after that really lame first take. <laughs> but uh, you know, he he doesn't he doesn't put you on edge. It was it's just yeah. like all the amazing things he's done. Um, but it became more of an inspiration to like rise to the, you know, rise to the occasion. Sure. Yeah. Do you think you've caught in the act acting bug? I totally have. Yeah. Music, I think music will always be, you know, my first love, but acting I, I really love it I love the ability to collaborate it's the thing I love about making music is you really do get to work together with a an interesting eclectic group of people and make something totally new mm -hmm. I love I love stuff like that and uh, and tapping into your own story and funneling it into someone else's that's also music it's mm -hmm. it's the art of storytelling it might be your story it might not I've written plenty of songs where it hasn't been about me and, um, and it's been about something I've ex watched or witnessed or any anything like that. It's all that creativity that goes yeah. behind it all. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Well, I'd love to get to a couple more comments. I sure. want to ask you a little bit more about the music and your acting. Uh, Martin Simpson says, superb singer-songwriter. And Bonnie Bossy says, welcome back, even though you never left my ears or playlist. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's really sweet. OK. Phil Newman, Lovejoy, is there a song on the record that is most meaningful moving to her? And if so, why? Oh, gosh. I don't have one that's the most meaningful. Mm -hmm. I, I think because each one of them, I, I really, it felt like open heart surgery writing this record. Mm -hmm. um, singing it has been the healing part, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but I don't have a favorite. I'm so sorry. That's such a lame answer, but that's just the truth. Like, I, I don't have a favorite. Each one kind of elicits something in me that um, that I needed, I guess I needed to write, needed to experience. And um, yeah, I can't pick a favorite kid. You know? Right, can't right. Can't do it. It's the same thing. Can't do it. Same idea. Yeah. Well, maybe there's a favorite, you know, when you're playing live or whatever, or the time of your life, too. Yeah. yeah it cha probably I mean, changes, I, I bet. It does. It's like every yeah. every night, every day, if you feel a little bit more kinship with one that day, it just depends on the mood you're in. So. Sure. All right. Some more questions here. Natalia K says, has she listened to any of John Paul White's new music that's just coming out? I did. Oh, what'd you think? I did. It's beautiful. Yeah. He's so talented. Yeah, and I know it's like you had you had such a good run as the Civil Wars. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was that transition like? You know, going back to your roots as a singer songwriter solo. Yeah, it was difficult. Yeah, it was really difficult. Um, just straight up honest. I mean, it's very difficult when something abruptly stops, mm -hmm. and you can get bitter about it, um, or you can just accept that that's that's the way that that's the way the world is. You know, we all. We all grow, we all shift, we all change, mm -hmm. and there's room for everybody. Yeah. There's room for everybody, so um, best of luck, you know. Both of you have gone on to do incredible things since then. Yeah. I mean, do you ever think one day, you know, you would ever reunite or something? I have no idea. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think for me, all that I can do is just be present for today mm -hmm. and just stay creative and let the path unwind as it does. Sure, sure. All right, Richard Batley says, love this lady and her music, hi, from the UK. Hey, yes. And Lee Ann Hastings, your snaps are the best ever. So you're, <laughs> I didn't realize this. So you're a Snapchat friend. Yeah, I'm Joy here. W. Snaps. Yeah. Joy W. Snaps. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, I just started. I, uh, you know, I, I have like a, I have like such a mixed feeling when it comes to social media because like the introvert in me is like, I'm, who do you really want to know where I am in a green room? Do you really care what I had for lunch? But I really love the. <laughs> I mean, there's just so many silly faces you can yeah. make, and um, so many voices that you can just alter. So life's too short to take yourself too seriously. So that's where I don't. All right. And uh, and in other places, but yeah, that's a fun. It's a fun one. So Pine Joy on? Williams, I'm on Snap, and I'm boring with it. I'd rather follow you and see what you're up to. Well. 
you know. Well, I'll, you I'll, have to, I'll have to see what you mean by that. Okay, it. all yeah. right, we'll have to see. Greg Giacconi says, what was your vocal training like? Did you start at a very young age, and were you trained in classic or opera? Oh, wow, wow. I actually, um, I had very little formal training. Mm-hmm. My mom it was, a, was a classically trained singer, so we would just sing around the house. So that, I think that's how I learned basic like pitch recognition, and my mom taught me how to harmonize. Mm-hmm. And um, but then I went from there. And actually, when I when I first signed my first record deal, I was seventeen, and I went on the road for two hundred and fifty days that year. And I didn't have the proper technique, so I I got really close to having to need like vocal cord surgery. Huh. Um, but I went two months silent, and everything kind of healed back up. Um, and and then I and then I went to see a woman named Jenny Muckle at uh, Vanderbilt Vocal Clinic, and who's now a dear friend, and she taught me how to breathe. Hmm. She taught me how to just use my body in a way where it doesn't in- get in the way of my voice. Um, so I haven't had any classical training. I think the best training I've had is just listening to like Billie Holiday and Nina Simone and uh, Janis Joplin and, and Emmy Lou Harris and Joni Mitchell and like the list goes on and on. And listening to how did they do that? How did that sound? And just and then trying to find my own way. Oh, that's cool. You have a lot of people to look up to. Those are great musicians she, and I'm singers there. that I mean, you just all, named. I'm just I'm just standing <laughs> on everyone else's shoulders. That's all we're ever doing. Oh. You know, there's always so many people that came behind to learn from. Well, you yourself were a Grammy winner. Uh, you guys won four four Grammys, right? Yeah. As the Civil Wars. Yep. Uh, where do you keep your Grammy today? They are the Grammys are in the listening room in uh, Nate's and my and Miles' house mm-hmm. in Nashville. And we have the listening room, it's literally just, uh, it's like this wood paneled room, it's really cozy. Um, we have like a, literally a wall of vinyl because my husband, like, that's what he collects. And um, and then so we have, there. it's like one, two, three, four, it's very symmetric. Yeah. And, um, and then we have a swing in the room, like this old Victorian looking swing. So uh, we do morning, we do morning listens with Miles, like vinyl. Uh, he's so very into the Beatles right now. I love so it. So he just sits and swings, and we we listen to music together and have little dance parties in there. And that's so that's cool. where they are. Does he know your music from other music? Does he, he know does. when that's mommy? Yeah. He does. He yeah, he does. Every once in a while, he mixes it up, and that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I think he's still he has like three. He's, he's four. Oh, he's four. Okay. Yeah, he just turned four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah you Close. did your research. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, he loves music. He loves music. Um, the other day, he like specially requested "Coat of Many Colors" by Dolly Parton. And I was like, "You're the coolest kid I've ever." <laughs> and then the other day, I'm totally bragging. It's what I'm doing. I'm a mom. But um, at a wedding, we were. Uh, he requested Nirvana. And I was like, this, he's cooler than I'll ever be. Oh, my god! He gosh. really is. And I he's only it. four. All right. Just imagine what he can do down the line. Maybe he'll get into music, too. Who I knows? Know. I don't know. We, we don't push it. Yeah. You know, we don't yeah. push it. I just want him to do something that he loves. That's, oh, that's what we're all trying to do, right? Yeah. That's, what, <laughs> that's, that's the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, Amanda Teresa says, so excited you're creating fresh music and a way of healing for others. Mm-hmm. And Rick Morey says, need a bass player? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the rate I'm going, I'm like stripping it back and stripping it back. But if I change my mind, I'll let you know. All right, all right. Matthew Malerba says, last summer you performed a perfect show here at Gramercy Theater here in New York. Um, any chance we'll see get to see a show or a song this trip? Um, not this trip because I'm leaving like in two moons, as Miles would say. I'm mm. leaving in like 48 hours, but um, there will be more music coming. Okay. All right, so some new tunes, some yeah. new some new music. Yeah, okay. so I'm hoping to circle back around. All right, when good, the good. time is right. And you're performing this summer a little bit on tour, or a couple um, of yeah, no, no, no. yeah. I'm actually yeah. not. Okay. Like we're we're keeping it. I feel like, I guess if I was a farmer, the word would be like fallow ground. It's okay. good. It's good to like rest for a little bit. Sure. Let something come up again. I want to make sure that what I do next is, um, it just feels the very best for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've done a lot of work on soundtracks too. I mean, I don't know how many of those songs you wrote for the this, the movie or how many were written before, but how yeah. was it like writing for a film if that's what you had to do? Yeah, I mean like for, like when we wrote, are you talking about like Taylor? Yeah, like exactly. Like Taylor for The Hunger Games? Yeah. Um, Taylor just called me that, uh, she knew we were in LA doing a show and mm-hmm. she was in LA working with T-Bone. And, um, and she just called and was like, well, I need it. we need to do a song. Yeah. I was like, okay. So we showed up and we wrote it in like three hours and oh, wow. recorded it in that same day. That's what you're hearing. Um, and it, you just kind of, you try and f- find the mood that feels the most authentic. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's how it goes. But uh, like, 
I sang with Chris Cornell yep. on uh, 12 Years a Slave. Uh, he wrote that song. I okay. just, I mean, I just got to sing with Chris Cornell. So yeah. I was like, I'm, I'll sing the news. I will sing the news if, if it means I get to sing with you. Like, it's such an incredible voice. Yeah. Um, and then I just, uh, within the last year and a half, I did um, something with uh, Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel uh, for a movie called uh, Devil Know the Easy. So um, I love doing that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there'll be more. It's so fun. You get you get to sort of step outside of yourself and and try on someone else's clothes mm -hmm. and then and then write from that place. It's fun. I love it. I Is love there it. anyone you'd like to collaborate with? Oh, I mean, yeah, we could have a really long talk about that. <laughs> actually, um, so many people. I mean, oh. I would you know I would love to collaborate with uh, with Radiohead. I would love to collaborate with Annie Lennox. I would love to. I mean, the, honestly, I mean, I could bore you to tears, so I'm just gonna skip. We can just skip ahead because okay. the list really is so long. But I, feel I like love those, collaborating. Yeah, with no, that's great. I mean, yeah. you just have the whole career ahead. Who knows? Radiohead, we're calling Joy Williams. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, they're on tour right now. I think but. they are. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm with a killer album. Yeah, so <sighs> they're really to it all the time. so great. Yeah. This yeah. is so great. Okay, I want to get to some more comments before we have to wrap. Chelsea Butner says, listen to Joy for years and before Civil Wars. Love her. She's a constant inspiration. Uh, Elsie Poon, did you re-record the vocals for the acoustic EP? Nope. Huh. We recorded everything acoustically um, in Nashville with Charlie Peacock. Hmm. And then um, as, you know, as the, as the muse would have it, I was like, let's see what we can do to build this out. So what you're hearing is the the original form hmm. of the song oh, and I did that intentionally I felt like there was a, it's like a Polaroid mm -hmm. you know it's capturing that moment in time um, going back and singing it I felt I just didn't feel right about it um, live you know I can obviously do that but, <laughs> um, but there was there was um, there was there was a mystique to the first rounds of doing that mm -hmm. and I want I wanted to honor it that way that's cool. Yeah. I'm glad. I was actually. I'm glad she asked that question. Is that yeah. 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 I assume maybe you redid it. You know. So, Emily says. Uh, Emily Sean Lasusa says, "Women was woman was my favorite theme song uh -huh. as I gave birth to my child last yes. month." Yes. Thank you for this amazing anthem for women everywhere. Oh man, that's so great. That's cool to hear for that song. Do so you, you hear that a lot? Uh, that I a little bit. I no. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know what you would term yeah. a lot or a little bit. Yeah. Everything feels like a lot. You know. Um, it's just so awesome being like, dude, we, I was, somehow the music was like in the room while you were giving birth. It's like crazy to me how, I just said this a couple minutes ago, it's crazy how music can travel. Yeah, yeah. And like the life it can take on. Um, so it's awesome. I love it. Ashley yeah. Miller, I loved your music since the Civil Wars, but Venus was transformative for me. So I was wondering, is there any chance you'll be touring in the near future? Yeah, again, we, mm -hmm. um, there, I'm having dinner with my booking agent tonight, so um, yeah, there's okay. talks about it. But I want to make sure that it's the right, it's the right thing and the right fit. And um, my son is starting preschool, so there's also real life to kind of consider as well. So um, there's talks. So it's all always a balance, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be on tour all year long, and then no, I've done son. that. Yeah, it's I've too done much. that. I mean, he's been in the bunk with me, like sleeping in the bunk, you Aww. know, on the tour bus. And, um, and he's getting bigger now, so it's there's a lot to consider about how to, you know, it's not just about me and my music, it's mm -hmm. like, if I want to try and find the healthy tension if mm -hmm. I can, if I can, which is impossible, but at least the attempt, I feel like I want to suss it out, but there will be, there will be more coming. So joy on the road soon, but not yet. Gabe Ish. Easter, Joy, I followed you since your time spent on Christian radio yeah, man. to your independent projects and then with the Civil Wars and love what I'm seeing and hearing now. Uh -huh. What do you hope will be said of your legacy as a whole in the distant future when all is said and done? Holy cow. Whoa, we're getting serious here. Dude, that's a, um, that's a great question. I think that I was brave. And not that I was perfect, because no one is. Um, that I was brave, that I attempted to be kind, and um, and loved people well. That has nothing to do with music, or does it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that I lived a full life, and that I, hopefully that, that, that that love can ripple off to other people. Um, that matters to me. More than, meant more than record sales, more than any of that, is how, how I, how I love, how I love myself, how I love the people around me, 
and um, and people that I interact with. I feel like that's a legacy a lot lo- that lasts a lot longer than even songs. I think, mm-hmm. um, but both, hopefully both. Well, I like to leave it there. Yeah, I think that's a good last question. Yeah, thank you so much for coming yeah, in today. Such a pleasure, me. not a joy, but also a joy to talk to you. Joy <laughs> Williams, but, six, but seven but, times. But seven times. Seven times. Uh, acoustic Venus Acoustic is out now. Maybe another episode on roadies. We'll see. <laughs> And uh, we'll catch you next stream. Yeah. Work in the car, or you're having a conversation with someone you haven't seen in a really long time, um, or you're just hanging out with someone that you love being still. Like I think there's, it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. Creativity and and inspiration for me, if I'm calm enough to find it, it's all over the place. Wow, that's nice to hear. In addition to your music, we've also seen you make a small screen debut Mm -hmm. on the Showtime series, Roadies. Congrats on that. You guest star in two episodes. Yeah. They've already aired for the summer. What There may or may not be another episode. Ooh, that's exciting to hear. But you didn't hear that from me um, live online. (laughs) We'll just table that for now. (laughs) Yeah. But you did did connect with Cameron Crowe, the series creator, via Twitter, right? How did that that all come about? Well, he was was a fan of the Civil Wars, and then uh, we started, like, DMing each other, uh-huh. and um, and it just came, it just grew from there. It just became this friendship that blossomed. And you know, Nate, my husband, and Miles, my son, we moved to Venice Beach mm-hmm. um, and bought a house there when we were uh, working on Venus. And um, I wanted to be closer to my dad while he was um, sick at the time, too. So Cameron became part of sort of like the crew, just like part of the friend uh, tribe, as it were. And he was telling me about this show idea that he had, and of course I loved it because you know being living on the road basically since I was 17 on and off that was really inspiring to me. So we would just share, we just share huh. about what we experienced on the road. I mean, his stories are like of epic oh, proportions, I'm sure. um, and just our mutual love for the people that work so hard that day. I'm joined by singer songwriter Joy Williams. Joy, so great to have you yeah, here today. Thanks for having me. It's a joy to have you here. Oh, no. <laughs> if I had a dime. Right? You probably hear that all like, the time. I maybe have like five dimes. It's not yeah. really that many. <laughs> well, now you have six. Yeah. <laughs> Well, congrats on your new album. It's Thank called you. Venus Acoustic. It's an acoustic version of an album you put out last year. Yeah. And why did you decide to go acoustic with this record? Well, I think after building it out the way that we did, it just, um, I don't know, I just felt like the songs were still, um, I don't know, lingering. It was like they just kept lingering for me to kind of like take another look at them again. And, um, and how we wrote them was stripped down. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I co-wrote them, it was, they were all like acoustic guitar and vocal, save one song was a piano, but it was always that really stripped down kind of form. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I wonder what would happen if I just put it out like that. So putting it out has been really exciting and I've been really thrilled with the response. Seems like people have been really connecting with it. Yeah, and it hit number one on one of the iTunes charts, so congratulations on that. So that's good to hear. I do. Yeah. Yeah, it does feel good. Of course it feels good. That's great. By the way, if you're watching on Facebook, send us your comments, send us your questions, and I'll get to them on the air. So what's that like going back to the you know the roots and back to those old versions? Did it take a long time or was it easy to kind of pull that together? No, it felt really organic yeah. to do. And it wasn't like this overly calculated move either. It was just, it was like, well, you know, we have this. Right. Like, why don't we share this? I don't want to just keep it in the vault and like let it gather dust if there might be a place for people to appreciate it. And I don't know. I feel like music is for sure. That's a new people and they probably you probably hear from fans, oh, this song meant so much to me and everything. It is cool to hear that. Yeah. I never I never anticipate that, but I always appreciate it. Yeah. You know? It makes you feel that it's not just some sort of like selfish endeavor, you know. It's true. It's cool to see the the strawberry shoots like keep going out further and further and further. However many years I'm you know, I'm doing this. I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, yeah, and continue to go. Well yeah. we're getting a lot of uh, comments from fans, so I wanna get to some of them yeah. now. Oh so you're not checking your, your like Facebook page I'm not sure. right now. Your own <laughs> personal Facebook page. It is, yeah, they're, yeah, I'm, not checking, I'm like, I'm online, oh I'm texting God, everyone so I know, all my right friends. Right She's terrible. That's why I'm holding the, <laughs> the phone. <laughs> but we are, we are actually getting some great Good. comments. Megan says, Venus is a wonderful album. Love the acoustic, too. So, Sweet. like, that's really nice. Thank yeah, you, Megan. Yeah, it's amazing that, that, you know, people are enjoying both. Yeah, it's yeah. Bringing, it's bringing new fans, and it's also kind of bringing along, you know, those who've been really loyal to them. Absolutely. Uh, Jeff Seiler says, what inspires you and creates those great songs? Oh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, Good question. Conversations with friends or um, journaling or Mm -hmm. books I've read. 
movies I've seen. Um, the process of life is, is like an unending space of creativity for me. Like how we grow as people, how we connect, how we fall in love, how we fall out of love. Um, you know, what's it like to become more awake and present in the moment? Like those are things I love. Mm -hmm. And that happens every day, whether you're like, you know, making your kid grilled cheese for lunch or, you know, you're off to a different way. Um, it was a lot to process. But um, on the acoustic uh, version, we w I wanted to make sure the songs that we chose you know, really sort of highlighted the moving forward process. Because mm -hmm. um, I do, I tackle things like grief and, um, and belonging and what it looks like to repair something that's been broken and it, within me first and um, finding your way out again and um, w hopefully with clearer eyes in the process. Somewhat therapeutic for you? Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Music's kind of like that <laughs> for me in general. Whether I get to sing it live or write it, it's all, it all feels like a catharsis, but it's not just... It's not just like taking my own pulse, you know? I like to write in a way that hopefully other people could kind of like, I don't know, like take a post-it note from their own emotions and like put it on the song too. Those are the songs I love, you know? Yeah. The songs that have meant the most to me growing up. It was like, they know, they get me. You know, we've never met. It's like those kinds of songs always really mattered to me, so I'm trying to pay it forward. And I love that. I know, there was those, especially when you're young, I feel like songs really hit you. I mean, there's some songs that are just like, even when I like hear them what? today. Like what? Well, Putting you on the spot. I know, putting me on the spot. Well, I'm a big Bruce Springsteen fan, for yeah. example. So, I mean, I know a lot of Got people love boss. Thunder Road, but I yeah. mean, I loved Racing in the Street and some mm. of the deeper tracks. So, mm -hmm. I, whenever I listen to Bruce, I feel like I'm thrust back into like a 12 year old girl. Dude, right? REM, Everybody Hurts. Oh, I yeah. Was, I was just like, that was like on boo repeat. <laughs> I was like boo hooing in my room. Like, well, I was like exactly. eight. I, you know, I'm like, what did I have to be sad about? Like, homework? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I thought the same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, believe me, I was like on repeat on the way to the mall. Yeah. It <laughs> It can just transport you, you know? Oh. That's what it's meant to do. It is, and it's nice that you're giving that back. It is, and there's a couple of songs that didn't make it on the first one, mm -hmm. that's, including the title track, Venus. Yeah. So tell us the story behind that. That's kind of a throwback to <laughs> yeah. some like 70s albums. It is, though, right? it totally is. I know. Uh, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it was just really fun to kind of, as we were figuring out how to put the, uh, the more produced full solo album together, because we were listening to it, I was like, I think we should just keep it more compact. Like, but we have these extra songs. Like, yeah, but like this just feels right to me. So we we let some songs go mm -hmm. um, and like kind of put them back in the vault. And then when we were putting the acoustic record together, I was like, we should maybe we should throw in like a couple surprises in there. And um, Venus writing Venus was such a it was such an, a, a fun experience. You know, we I did that with Matt Morris and mm -hmm. uh, and also wrote it with Charlie Peacock, who I've done other work with in the past and. It was just so fun writing that song, and then it just felt it just felt like the right thing to finally let it fly, and um, and put it out. And I think it's fun too now that like people can connect the dots. Like, why did she name it Venus? Like, well, that's because yeah. of this song. So, um, the Venus sort of led the way thematically for me, and um, and there it is. Can you talk a little bit about the themes you tackle on this album? Yeah, I mean they're not easy themes, yeah. really. I mean. I went through a lot, you know, in the last four years. There was just a lot of change, whether it was career change, mm -hmm. post the Civil Wars, um, I lost my father to cancer, just learning how to become a new mom yeah. and, um, and figure out how to do life in a totally different way.